Insurance. Last week's budget delivered a $2.4 billion boost to help Canadians who have lost their jobs because of the sluggish economy and the oil slump. The new federal plan extends eligibility for EI by five weeks, up to a maximum of 50. Long-tenured workers who tend to be older can get an extra 20 weeks. But the enhancements are only for those in a dozen hardest-hit regions of the country. So is the program fair, or does it exclude deserving Canadians based on geography? Joining me now, Steve McKinnon. He's a Quebec Liberal MP in studio. In Edmonton, Shannon Stubbs is a Conservative Deputy Critic for Natural Resources. And in Regina, Aaron Weir is the NDP Public Service Critic. Good to see you all. Appreciate you being here on a constituency week when you're busy doing stuff in your offices. Uh, Steve McKinnon, let me, let me start with you. Why did the government come up with this formula, which means that only 12 places in the country get these extended benefits? Well, in fact, in a, in a world where uh, uh, decisions must be made, we took um, uh, data in terms of the spikes in unemployment, mm -hmm. uh, quick spikes in unemployment, over a very short period of time because obviously of the hard hit uh, oil and gas sector among other things uh, and uh, these regions are obviously very large regions and they extend right through northern Canada northern British Columbia Alberta Saskatchewan uh, and into Newfoundland and Labrador but let's let's remember that this is also done in the context of vast improvements to the EI system EI has um, become increasingly hard to get over the 10 years of the Harper government EI became well nigh impossible to get from in many regions of the country so uh, Mr. Morneau, Mr. Trudeau, uh, our cabinet ministers have long said we will come to the aid in many ways including in the EI program of these workers that have that have been hit by the oil and gas and the commodities crunch and we're proud to have done that. Okay I want everybody to weigh in but first I'm going to play this clip of Siobhan Vipon from the Alberta Federation of Labor. I spoke to her yesterday and she says that this is patently unfair that's probably not surprising but everybody have a listen to why she says it's unfair. People travel for work, yeah. so they need to see um, the benefits there when they lose their job. And if they're working out of town, they shouldn't be penalized because they live in a region where somehow the unemployment rate isn't the same as somewhere else. So it, it's not necessarily, it, I guess what she's saying is it's not really representative of how people work anymore, uh, Steve mm. McKinnon. People travel, there might be people in Edmonton who didn't get the extended benefits, who travel up north to yeah. Alberta and do work, so why would those benefits not have been Well, there are to? measures there for long-tenured workers, and we are reducing the waiting time, so there are a whole bunch of other uh, improvements and, uh, to the EI system and, and making the EI system more accessible mm. to all Canadians that have come into effect. But let's remember that this is a system based, uh, and that, which must have integrity and is based on unemployment rates in specific zones of the country. Uh, so through Atlanta, Canada, Quebec, my home province mm -hmm. and, and other places, in, in areas of lower unemployment where there are more job possibilities, uh, the um, accessibility of EI will be a little more difficult. In areas where unemployment has spiked, including these uh, uh, very large 12 regions yeah. across the country, which we are now adding, um, uh, then um, uh, EI is going to be more, uh, I, yeah, going and to I, be I, easier to yeah. get. And and so, I get, yeah, I get that it's trying to sort of even out the playing field and make it fair across the country. But Shannon Stubbs, I'll weigh in with you because you're in Edmonton. And again, Edmonton, one of the regions that's not getting it, which means that you've got you, it is a different situation in Alberta because you've got some sectors that are, are, are very hard hit and very high un un unemployment rates. So they get the extended benefits in Edmonton, not the case. So give me a sense of what what you think the government should be doing. Well, it's certainly the case that Alberta in particular has been hardest hit by all of the provinces because of the downturn in the energy sector. But, you know, speaking on behalf of my constituency, the town of Burgerheim is also one area excluded from the extension of temporary EI, from the temporary extension of EI benefits mm -hmm. for those who qualify. That's in the centre of the industrial heartland. It's right near Refinery Row. And just like in Edmonton, uh, there are hundreds of people, thousands of people who work in the service and supply side of the oil and gas sector who commute back and forth uh, to the oil sands or right. who so yep, might just or be working in work restaurants or northeast yeah, yeah, Alberta. Yeah. yeah, and the downturn in the energy sector, of course, is, as you've indicated, impacting all other sectors right across the province. So it's just curious to me that in the hundreds of pre-budget consultations um, and making these decisions about extending EI benefits, how it could be possible that a place like Bruderheim uh, could be excluded, excluded from this temporary targeted support measure. And of course the wait time 
uh, that doesn't come into effect until January 2017. So that doesn't help people who are losing their jobs now or on the verge of losing their jobs. But the biggest issue, um, really a question here, is the budget which almost uh, ignored energy and the oil and gas sector altogether. Okay. doesn't actually include yeah. a jobs plan, and that's the real long-term solution. Okay, well, I mean, we can get into that, but, but I, I think that's a, sort of a, a partially separate discussion, but we, I'm happy to get into it in a minute. Aaron Ware, let me weigh in with you, because the same, same sort of issue in Saskatchewan. Some places uh, do get the bump up, others don't. Estevan would be an example where um, you're not getting uh, the enhanced benefits. What do you think the government should have done? Just sort of said, okay, everybody gets enhanced benefits if they need it, or, or how, I mean, at some point you have to, you, you do run out of money and measures here. So what would have been your solution? Well, the budget and Mr. McKinnon have presented this extension of employment insurance benefits as a response to the downturn in oil and gas. Uh, in Saskatchewan, most of the oil patch is in the southern part of the province, and it was indeed Regina and southern Saskatchewan that were excluded uh, from this measure. So it actually doesn't help the people in our province who have been laid off uh, from jobs in the oil industry. In terms of the bigger picture of uh, what should be done, um, successive liberal and conservative governments have cut back EI to the point where we now have fewer than 40% of unemployed Canadians uh, receiving benefits. So we do need to make the program more accessible. Uh, the NDP has advocated a national entrance requirement of uh, 360 hours. We also need to improve the level and uh, duration of benefits. So there, there are many things that need to be done uh, to restore the program, but just in terms of this specific uh, extension mm -hmm. of benefits uh, for the oil sector, uh, I don't know why Saskatchewan's oil patch has been left out. Okay, I'll, I'll let Steve McKinnon respond, but also respond to this. What people would say is, we pay into EI because when we need it, it should be there. So what? why is it not there for everybody in the same way? Well, let's remember that EI is available uh, to everyone. And but in not fact, in the same way. And, and now you're offering benefits to some areas and not to others. Indeed, right? but EI has always been based on this notion of higher unemployment areas get access to uh, longer benefits it's because clearly job prospects sure. are lower. And le le let me be clear about one thing. No one's making the argument that there is not pain everywhere throughout the oil and gas sector or indeed throughout the Canadian economy. We have inherited a very anemic economy, an economy that was based largely on, uh, and the previous government uh, made it harder to get EI and based our economic prospects largely on oil and gas. Uh, now we are... I don't think they're responsible for the low cost of oil, though. I mean, I think no, that this was happening whether, <laughs> whether there were others... Clearly not. Nor do they have answers, uh, uh, immediate answers to the low cost of oil, and 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 uh, sometimes they claim to do that. But what we are saying right now is that yes, we have to make it better, work better for yeah. unemployed Canadians. But we also have to take this economy and inject growth, and that's what sure, the I get that. But that, that's, that's not what, happening. That's not happening overnight. That's a long-term plan, and I'm not even sure I saw well, what the plan for growth was in well, the budget. Well, it's not a long-term plan for that skilled laborer in Edmonton, in southern Saskatchewan, or in Gatineau, Quebec, who. Uh, is able to put his talents or her talents to work, uh, rebuilding our infrastructure, helping build water and sewer projects, uh, and with this massive injection of infrastructure money that we are putting in, we are going to help uh, these communities not only rebuild their infrastructure, okay, but, I, I, but put people to work. And, and uh, this I, is I'm an not important sure, I'm component. not sure infrastructure is the long-term plan for growth. I mean, I thought the government created this economic council for growth in order to come up with ideas for growth because this is what you're doing right now. I'm not sure that that well, was the, the, the whole... If that's the whole strategy if, if, that if I, I, could, I didn't read it properly. Well, 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 well no one is saying is that infrastructure okay. is the only solution, but infrastructure is certainly a solution for uh, skilled laborers who are able to put some of these talents to work, people who perhaps have been laid off in the oil and gas sector. And, and let's also okay. remember that, um, that the EI program has to have integrity if it's going to be fair to all Canadians. And, and having an EI program which responds in a greater way to places of higher unemployment is in the yeah, essence I'm, I'm, of, I'm not, of EI. Uh, yeah, and I'm not disputing that. I'm, I'm saying, I guess, if you're going to offer for enhanced benefits, why are they not offered equally in provinces that are hardest hit? Aaron, where are you want in? And, and well, they, 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 well, they have I just want to. I just want to pick well, no, up but on they this haven't, note. But they, that, that, that's my point: is that they haven't. There, there are places where they ha you haven't enhanced them, and people. There uh, no, are people but, who are. But we took the 12 economic zones in the country with the highest spike in unemployment, uh, as measured uh, by uh, Statistics Canada, and applied 
these new measures and these new enhancements to EI to them. So if, if, an, if, if an area has not been included, and we will continue to monitor this, by the what way. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, we get statistics every month about unemployment, and I'm sure that the government will be responsive to those. But, but uh, we have monitored and we have, we have taken those spikes in unemployment that have occurred in 12 zones across the country. These are large uh, population areas uh, and again, made EI more not... accessible and, uh, and uh, better benefits for longer. Okay, Aaron well, Weir and then and then. Well, well if, yeah, I mean, if I could maybe provide some information that I think the government uh, should be monitoring. Yeah. Statistics Canada's last EI report uh, indicated that EI use in Regina was up by 37% over the past year, almost as much as the 41% increase across our province. So you could say that things are a little bit less bad in Regina, uh, but really it was pretty close uh, to the rest of the province. And I would say that our city and southern Saskatchewan's oil patch are actually uh, very much in need of this uh, benefit extension. I also wanted to pick up on this discussion of stimulus uh, for the economy because I actually see the EI program itself as one of the most effective uh, forms of stimulus in that it provides uh, money uh, in the regions that really need it uh, to people who are out of work who are going to turn around and spend those dollars uh, in their uh, local communities. And one of the disappointing things is that a number of the small improvements to EI that were in the budget don't actually take effect until 2017. So it's really a missed opportunity uh, to give but, help to people who yeah, are laid but, off but, now but, but Mr. Weir, uh, surely, and to stimulate but, the economy. But Aaron, we're surely you're not saying the government should have enhanced, ben or, you know, enhanced benefits for everybody across Canada. Is that what you're suggesting? Oh, I think there are some things that should have been done across Canada. For example, um, right now most workers don't even qualify for EI, even though almost everyone uh, pays into it. So we need to make the program much more accessible. Yeah, but, but the, and I, but, I believe there should be a national entrance requirement but, but, but the extension, of, of 360 I, I, hours. I heard that part. But the extension of benefits, is that something that you, you think the government should have offered to every region in Canada? Well, the government presented it as a temporary measure in response to the downturn in the oil and gas sector. So just uh, taking that as given, I think it should have been provided uh, to oil and gas producing regions uh, like southern Saskatchewan, like Regina, like Edmonton. I, I I guess, I guess at some point, I guess at some point, though, yeah, I guess at some point the government has to put some sort of boundaries around it. Uh, Shannon, Shannon Stubbs, get, what do you think uh, when when you hear Steve McKinnon and the Prime Minister today say we're going to continue to monitor this? What do you think that means? Do you think that there, there's a, a door opening here in case things need to be adjusted to reflect employment? Well, I, I sure hope so. You know, more than 100,000 people uh, in the oil and gas sector lost their jobs during the past year across Canada. In Alberta, it's particularly acute. 22,000 people lost their jobs in January alone. So these absolutely are the hardest hit uh, areas due to this downturn in energy. Areas which have uh, contributed so much to Canada in, in multiple ways, in large part because of the energy development here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hear from Albertans and from residents in Lakeland that what they really do want to see is a jobs plan. And the government likes to evade responsibility for this by blaming it all on low oil prices, which of course is a key driver behind the energy job losses. But the government makes things so much worse because they're creating instability and uncertainty with announcements of new uh, and uncertain uh, fiscal and regulatory measures. They uh, do not effectively or consistently counter mischaracterization of our of our, sustain, our track record of sustainable development of oil sands. They hobnob with anti-Canadian energy lobby groups that call the, the oil sands, for example, dirty business and destructive. They are not active proponents for accessing diverse export markets and for expediting the completion of crucial energy infrastructure that is critical to the long-term sustainability although, although and sh prosperity sh of the energy Stubbs, the, the, the changes to some of the regulations were in place for two pipelines uh, that, that are already under consideration. Um, so I'm not sure that they're, they're sending a message about what the future of pipelines is, given that they've just made that for two specific pipeline projects. In terms of the five new principles they announced on the uh, on the environmental assessment for energy projects, mm -hmm. yeah, there's still a lack of details. All of these things combined causes uncertainty, instability, and the fact is they deter investment and they escalate the job losses that are happening right now because of the gl low global oil prices. Okay, I gotta let Steve McKinnon respond, then I'm gonna wrap it up. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, I, I would invite everyone to consider what would be happening to EI had the Harper government's program uh, election program been enacted. There was nothing in there for EI. 
We, we announced a comprehensive suite of reforms for EI, and it's making people in, across the West, uh, across Western Canada, Northern Canada, Newfoundland and Labrador, access, uh, access EI when they need it, and that is as it should be. On oil and gas, yes. uh, the Liberal Party supported the Keystone XL pipeline. The Conservatives were unable to get a transnational or a pipeline to Tidewater built during their time in office. Uh, we have put in place very solid measures, which involve consulting Canadians, consulting Aboriginal groups, and we think that is a process that will yield a better uh, outcome in terms, of, uh, in, ter in terms of applications, and the government will, uh, will take those up at the appropriate time. There is no uncertainty. If you ask pipeline companies, they will ha happily participate in these processes, and uh, the government will continue to promote um, uh, the energy sector okay. as, it pro as it promotes economic growth across the economy okay. in Canada. i, I got to wrap it up there. Thank you all. These are important issues for Canadians in, in all, all sorts of regions. So I appreciate you, Wayne, and Steve McKinnon, Shannon Stubbs, your first time on the show. Thank you very <laughs> much. You fared okay there. And Aaron Weir, good Thanks. to see you all. Thank appreciate you. it.